On the 25th of November 2015, at the headquarters of the United Nations in New York City, more than 150 world leaders and representatives converged to discuss the world's future and its matter of sustainability, collectively subscribing to 17 specific sustainability goals which spoke most pertinently to the needs of the developing world. These goals were outlined in the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, an agenda subscribed to internationally in matters of law, education, infrastructure, and resource usage. The effects of this agenda have found ongoing tangibility in the developing world since 2015, with various building associations subscribing to sustainability practices to establish a precedence of the contemporary built environment. One such practice of design is the theory of passive house, the practice of constructing passively operated spaces that generate any electricity and water required for operation. Emphasis is also held on thermal efficiency and purity of air to maintain the structure as an independent package. When aligning the passive house standards with the scope of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the expectations from the world's leading nations can be made clear as to the future of the public space. The trajectory of the passive house practice draws towards a municipal setting and is seeing construction as of today. The Gaubadian Railway City, located in the People's Republic of China, is a contemporary example of passive house in the public space. Organising several high-rise apartments containing educational and commercial infrastructure to serve its occupants, the arrangement of these apartments enabling appropriate sunlight penetration for their highly efficient thermal mass and acoustic dampening, which is further assisted with the reintroduction of biodiversity at the ground level. It is currently recognised as the largest passive house project in the world. The western precedence of passive cities can be located in Heidelberg, Germany. Known as the Bahnstadt district and described as a settlement, this passive space runs entirely on its own renewable energy and is toted to become the largest passive house project by the year 2022. Every structure within the space being constructed under the standards of the Passive House Institute. In the domestic sphere, the Green Building Council of Australia have aligned themselves to the sustainability goals of the United Nations within their mission statement, with many construction companies in Australia adhering to the Green Star Performance Rating Tool to validate their work, a substantial precedence of passive Australian architecture is aligned with those sustainability goals. One such example is the Vanquish House in Brisbane, Queensland, built specifically to cope with the hot and highly humid northeastern climate containing weather-resistant render, triple-glazed windows, and an active insulation. Vanquish House is a net-zero structure, the energy required to construct it, used from a renewable source next door. Considering the goals of the world leaders in sustainability, and observing the practices seen in the contemporary sphere, the future of Wickham Island can be imagined more tangibly, aligning with the standards of the developing world. In the year 2050, Wickham Island is an entirely passive city, having stretched far beyond the agenda for 2030, and similar to the Barnstadt district, each structure in this space offsets its own carbon through the exclusive use of renewables. This is achieved through solar energy, hydrokinetic generation, and the introduction of biodiversity within the structures themselves. The construction of Wickham Island has been undergone using only renewables, utilizing the city's passive generation in this process similar to the construction of Vanquish House. Wickham Island's organisation of high and low density structures is referential to Le Corbusier's Radiant City, appropriate to the proto-modernistic style of this time. The arrangement also fulfils the utilities achieved in the Galbadian Railway City, allowing for the necessary sunlight that powers the city to have appropriate coverage. The reintroduction of biodiversity amongst Wickham has similar effects in further offsetting carbon and significantly reducing the acoustic load produced by such a highly populated space. The concept of greenhouses is present on a significant scale, Wickham Island containing mostly green skyscrapers to promote the efficiency of falling water throughout the city. Grey water usage and water recycling are present as forms of infrastructure to ensure the maintenance of this biodiversity in a climate as mercurial as Australia's. This interpretation of Wickham is the benchmark of sustainability for the leaders of world leaders and represents the sentiments held by the passive construction community when questioning the trajectory of tomorrow.